们最后下期再比较 Kelly。不巧的是，我也喜欢 Kelly。正下路等你。IG 目前状态很好，但是我们 JDG 也不差。对战 IG 我会尽力打出优势，开锐起来。JDG 目前成绩还不错，不过 IG 不会输乎每一个对手，这场比赛更不会掉以轻心。IG 目前是东部第一，这次与他们对战，我觉得还是有一定的压力的。但是我相信我们只要打好自己，就一定可以。下季赛进入了尾声 ，IG 会打好并拿下下季赛的每一场比赛，我们有这个信心。比赛也是一个学习的过程，下季赛最后一次与 IG 对战，无论结果如何，我们都会学习很多。但是 JDG 还是会全力以赴，证明自己。There's normally the point in our split where we say it's about to come to a close and all things are going to be tied up and wrapped up going into the playoffs later on the split. But we have an extended season going all the way to week 11 after this. Doesn't mean that there are no more exciting matches to come because today, first up, we will have Suning taking on VG Live here from the Shanghai Superbrand Mall Arena. But later on tonight, we have the best match you will ever see in the LPL for this split at least, which is going to be Invictus Gaming taking on Jindong Gaming. IG continuing their form since spring split, looking stronger in the summer split regular season, whereas, a vict whereas JD, new challenges to the throne in the LPR, looking to make a good playoff run coming into summer split. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matthew Stewart, your host. Joining me on the analyst desk is Zach Rusty Pie. How are you doing today, Rusty? Doing well. I'm ready to get to the second set, but we've got to go through the, uh, the muck here, get through some fun sets to be seen first. Of course, it doesn't mean anything for either of the teams. No, it doesn't, because we can take a look at the standings in the LPR at the moment for Sunning as well as Vici. Sunning have locked in their playoff spot. That can still change, but it's very unlikely. They should finish as the fourth place team, whereas Vici do not have a chance to make playoff run, only picking up a single victory during the summer split of the LPL. Yeah, the Eastern Conference, Sunning Gaming is the only one purely locked in their position in the playoffs in fourth place. LGD can no longer catch them, so they will be stuck in fifth. And Vici, 1-16, our first set today. A bit of a struggle streak for those guys, but the rest of the Eastern Conference, JD, RNG, and IG, there is still some potential movement available. However, when you look towards the Western Conference, three of the teams don't even have colors next to their name. No. Because they're not locked in at all. TOP, Snake, as well as FPX are not locked in. One of these teams will not move into the playoffs. Snake and FPX are currently tied when it comes to points. TOP, though, picked up a victory over OMG. So now they're not only challenging for that fourth playoff spot, but also potentially trying to overthrow EDG after their decisive victory over OMG earlier in the week. Exactly. So now they can potentially push towards the second place in the standings. TOP Sports Gaming. Definitely rising to the occasion in this summer split. They're set against OMG. Now remember that OMG are a struggling side themselves. So you expect to see a clean closeout, a clean victory from the likes of TOP against them. And that's exactly what we do see now. It wasn't a Pentor, I don't believe, at the end of that one. But we come into the second match as well. And it was two quick games, two easy games, yep. two very clean games overall with only small my new details to tarnish the performances. We saw Gung play as well for the side of TOP. He looked on form, picking up Zoe in their second set, or second match, I should say, against OMG. Yep. And TOP are our premier sports organization in China. Uh, they're your main reseller of any sporting merchandise. So it's good to see that after a very poor spring split, They've done well in summer split. Yeah, they're doing it without Marin. Yes, well. without so Marin. Keep that in mind. Marin sitting on the bench. I have to imagine he's doing some kind of positional coaching work for them because their top laners have started to look very good. Liza stepped up to the plate. He's got some big ults in this set and throughout the season as well. And even their jungler XX has started to show up pretty big, actually, towards the latter half of this split. TOP have been the big surprise. They have been. Liza Moyu, as you said, the top laners for the side of TOP have looked very strong. And we had questions at the start of the split to say who would actually start for TOP. Would it be Marin? Would it be Moyu? Would it be Liza? Now it could be all three of them, but we haven't seen Marin too much. Yep. We'll have to see if TOP can actually lock in their playoff spot, but they will not be playing today. Because today's matches, we have first up, Suning taking on Vici. Then later on tonight, we have Jindong taking on Invictus Gaming in our 
match of the week and the best match you will damn see in the summer split of the LPL. It's entirely possible, Fish, that this second set is actually the set of the year prior to the playoffs happening, and that's just a very big thing to say when the likes of RNG and EDG are in the league. But currently, IG and JD are first and second in the Eastern Conference, and that is known as the best conference currently, just across the board, better than the West so far. The top of the table in that group has been phenomenal. JD have been phenomenal lately, and I do really look forward to that second set. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting set to watch. On top of that, it's Invictus Gaming's Fan Appreciation Day, so they'll be celebrating here in the Shanghai Superbrand Mall Arena, so there'll be plenty of IG fans all around, plenty of IG logos floating around this studio as well. But first, we have our first match coming up, Rusty. It's going to be Sunning taking on Vici. This is a match which, unfortunately, for either of these two teams is not going to matter too much. Yeah, now what does matter for Sunning Gaming before anything else is that they are locked in playoffs. So this isn't going to be like 6th versus 7th where nothing purely matters. For Vici, they're 1 in 16, they're struggling. Nothing does matter in the way of affecting their standings. And maybe they do want to you know, go out with a bang, prove they've got what it takes to stay in this league. But for Sunning Gaming specifically, they want to ramp up to playoffs. You want to actually finish the season strong. Now, I will say there is a chance that they do something a bit different, that they do play a little bit crazy with their champions because they can have some fun mm -hmm. to end the season off, be focusing on playoffs teams, not Vici. That's always possible. But if you were Sooning, off the back of losing to BLG, you probably want to bounce yes. back and prove that you're worthy of being in the playoff spot. Because that was a very, uh, that was an upset almost when they lost to BLG 1 and 2 in that best of three series. And it looked too good for Sooning. Again, it didn't really matter too much since they have already locked in their playoff position. They're going to be yeah. fourth. They can't go up to the third place. But there is the question of, are they going to ramp up going into playoffs with their final few matches to play in the LPL? Or do they hide their cards and make sure that they don't show these playoff teams what Sunning can actually provide during the playoff stage? And the thing is, like, IG with their owner as a sub can beat VG Gaming. So surely by just playing standard and not revealing anything crazy, Sunning Gaming should be able to beat VG. There should be no reason why Look, you actually are losing that right we, now. We said that about RNG against VG two yes, weeks ago, we Rusty. And it went to three games. Went two like of those games minutes. went to 60 yeah. minutes as well, where Vici should have actually taken those. <laughs> it was mistakes coming out from the side of Vici that allowed yeah. RNG to finish those matches. And how much do we want to say was RNG just as much as it was Vici? I don't it's really true. know, man. This isn't even the full mainstay roster of Vici starting in this set as well. We'll get into the rosters in a minute, but keep in mind that at this point, they have completely changed their rosters around. And the five men that took it to RNG is not going to be the one that takes to the rift in this set. So a lot has changed for Vici. Whereas for Sunin Gaming, it's about being consistent and about following that consistency through. I mean, it is a good time if you want to bring out your substitutes to play in an LPL match because nothing's going to change for Vici. They can't even take a better position than last place in their own conference. They are locked in to play next split. There's not going to be relegations for them. But it is a perfect time to bring out their substitutes. Do you think it's going to have much of an impact on their gameplay, bringing in substitutes for this match? <laughs> well, there are a couple of ways I could answer that question. I all think right. it will. Go with all the different ways you can answer that question, well, Rusty. It, it will have a different influence on their gameplay because it's not revolving around Swift in the jungle position. They don't have the duo of Swift to Coco in the jungle mid position, so mm -hmm. that synergy's gone. But they'll be the exact same in terms of gameplay because they'll probably still lose the set. That's, that's consistent. I mean... That's the other way I could answer it. Yeah. Idea. Well, uh, let's see if that actually happens again soon. As we're about to get into that match as soon as possible. Vici going to be playing with their substitute squad going into this match against Sunny Gaming. Sunny Gaming, their organization is a, ver a very large organization in China, well known for uh, their electronics. So we'll have to see if this organization can make it far in playoffs. JD had a really good split. I mean, they have made a late playoff run and kicked Sunning out of playoffs last split. So Sunning will did. be pretty happy that they've secured their playoff spot. Yeah. But night and day performances when it comes to their consistency in spring split and now summer split being a little bit shaky. And honestly, it is amazing that both JD and Suning have been able to make it into the playoffs in the first place. Both teams were fighting for fourth, now in second and fourth respectively, pushing as high up as they can towards the end of the split. Suning Gaming, they are the side that needs to go out with a bit more of a bang, maybe make that, that statement game and show JD that they're coming for them. Because if they finish in fourth and second, they'll be on the same side of the bracket. Well, for the side of Sunning, they're playing with Xiao Al, Hacker, Angel, Fury, and you. Nothing's changed here for Sunning. No, but Angel is the change for Sunning Gaming that isn't Fen Fen anymore. And yes. it's unfortunately not Knight, but Angel has stepped up to the plate. He's been doing wonderfully for the entire team. Surprised to say, because Fen Fen's been playing well. For the side of Vichy, though, it's Audi, Yutang, Fire Rain, Martin, and Caveman. And we've got the jungle changing once again. Now, I would not say that this is the full sub roster for Vichy Gaming. Audi, Caveman, and Fire Rain seem to be the starters and the standard for the team. 
But Martin coming in as AD carry, and Yordan coming in as well as the jungler. We've only really seen one set from him, to be <laughs> fair, and that sample size was not very flattering. Yeah. He was against a good team at that. So now is an opportunity for him to really prove himself in that jungle role and say that I don't suck. That was just the best team in the league that we were playing against, and I can keep up with others. It's the perfect time as well. It is a set that doesn't matter too much for Vici, so if Yudan comes into these sets, no pressure. If they lose, they lose. It's unfortunate. It's not going to affect their rankings. It's not going to affect their standings in the LPL. But at least gives him a chance on the big stage to show what he's made of. Yeah. Try to take it to some of these teams. He said last set wasn't too impressive from Yudan, but it could just be his first opening match. Nerves could get you. No stage experience. Now coming to the second set, should be much, much better for him when it comes to nerves and stage experience, but still very new, very green coming into the LPL. You know, I do agree. This is a very good opportunity for him to, you know, get stage experience, practice on stage against some of these better teams, better players, and in the proper environment, because that's the thing that changes the most with uh, compared to behind the scenes scrims that they'll no doubt be having with him anyway, where someone like Swift doesn't necessarily need extra stage practice. That man is a veteran. He has been on the stage for a very long time in the LPL even, and has been running rampant through some playoffs, through some regular season games. This is a good opportunity for Vici to, you know, step him to the wayside and say, we also want to challenge your position, give you incentives to improve and make sure that other junglers can threaten that and you grow with them. Get a very mismatched game going into this. Yes, Vici had the chance to showcase the substitutes, see what they're made of. Um, but for the side of Sumi, this is all business for them. As you said earlier, we could get one or two different types of playstyles coming out from Sunning. The fun Sunning, or the we want to go home right now Sunning. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll get the fun Vici. I, th I think that much should be... So really? Clear. You don't think we get the fun Vici? What yeah. is that? I mean, when you put all of these subs in, I think that the players themselves will have a point to prove. Uh, and I do think they'll continue to try and play the season out as seriously as they possibly can to you know, get those victories. I think Yodung in particular will be the one that wants to do that. Uh, Audi always has a, a point to prove. As a player, he has unfortunately not got the uh, best resume for his past results. If you think back to when he was on EDG at Rift Rivals making a debut, that was not very flattering. No, it was not. When it comes to Vici, he was also not very flattering, but showed promise. And so that promise hasn't been realized, and I think for him, he wants to prove that he still can keep up with the best because right now he's just getting actively exploited through the game. I mean, he's proved that during their set against RNG, but they've been consistently inconsistent in their matches. So let's get into the first match between Suning as well as Vici. Champion select, we see Akali, Aatrox, and Ari being banned out from the side of Vici. Tom Kench, Rakan, and Camille will be the three bands that Suning throw their way. Trundle has the first pick heading into the jungle for Hacker. And we see the Akali ban on the red side by Vici, which is usually a pretty key indicator that it'll be first picked by the opposing side alongside Aatrox now. So perhaps there is a chance that more of those bans are coming through out of necessity on that red side. And the blue side just gets that little bit of extra power once again through the draft phase. Yeah, we're going back to early 2017 spring split where you had Camille and a couple of other champions that were must ban picks on the red side unless you play the very unorthodox counters like Alawi. Yeah. Kali is very strong at the moment. Aatrox is very strong. Uh, Ari seems to be a target ban against Fury. Yes, it is. Uh, he's one of the few players that likes to whip out that uh, Ari in the bottom lane, which is very unique towards him, very unique towards Sunning Gaming, and something that they have proven that they actually have quite good mastery on. Fury has also proven himself that mm -hmm. when it comes to playing the mages in the bottom lane, he really does excel. It's quite funny because Ari was one of those unorthodox 80 carry bottom lane picks for a long time. Uh, in solo queue and just in casual play. Now actually seeing play in the bottom side of the map after some quality of life buffs that Riot gave her a few patches ago. Checking in with the rest of champion selects so far. Yasuo has been locked in for Vici. Alistar picked up as their support to combo with the mid lane or top lane pick. Yeah. Potentially even the bottom lane if Martin decides to flex the Yasuo. I wouldn't be surprised if Yasuo Alistar is actually the bottom laners just because they know soon in gaming will most likely be that Shen Swain duo. You know, having the Yasuo down there, the wind wall is very good into the uh, Swain, but of course with the rest of Vici's draft in the first three picks, they've given themselves really good flexibility by putting Fire Rain on the Yasuo. He's a Yasuo main in this team as well, so we'll caveat everything by just saying that. Gregor's Yasuo is a dangerous jungle mid duo. It is. They've got plenty of ways to proc the knockups for Yasuo's ultimate. Just a question of where the Yasuo is going to go eventually. Uh, going into the second ban phase, LeBlanc is the first pick that gets taken away by Vici. 
Some more champions ah. targeted at Angel. Certainly is. Angel's getting a lot of the focus here. That very specifically being banned away. It's one of those matchups where Yasuo doesn't always have the best time. LeBlanc has so much mobility that the wind wall kind of not always it's useful. Difficult. Yeah, and it's such a long cooldown compared to the rest of our, uh, LeBlanc's combos. So she'll often get two rotations off on your one wind wall. Tends to control the lane as a result. Still more mid focus to be seen. Yeah, I rarely have been banned out. So it seems like two of those mid lane champions of Akali and Aatrox were just necessity bans being on the red side of the rift. LeBlanc and Irelia being target banned against Angel. Yeah, but remember that he's still got Ryze and that he's also a very good Lissandra player. And if they know that the Yasuo is going mid, I see no reason not to even consider the Lissandra as a potential choice. It's also got Zoe, he's also got uh, the other one, Oriana, that's the other one that he can play. Now, I will say Zoe is countered by the Yasuo, but still another champion that he's got there. So these target bans are very specific for the lane, it feels like. Oriana can do well into Yasuo if he played correctly in that mid lane matchup. But to start ascending, though, they target the AD carry pool, with Kaiser and Misfortune being banned out against Martin. Martin does pick up Tristana as his AD carry pickup choice. Certainly does. So now, of course, that does show where the Yasuo is going and that Martin's going to be picking an AD carry. It should be the Swain and the Shen going into the bottom lane. And I think by going towards a physical damage dealing top laner, that is proved to be very much true as it opens the floor for things like Angel's most played champion in the rise. Now his seventh pick on this. Locked in in the mid lane for Sunning. They go for Gangplank on the top side of the map, played by Xiao Ao. Uh, with Alistar being picked up here by Vici, curious to see what their final pick is going to be. Caveman hovering through a couple of different support champions. It's unlikely that Alistar will be flexed anywhere off the button the no. bottom lane. Uh, Audi is that tank player though. He's got the potential for carries if he go wants to flex, and that is a big flex in the top lane because he knows his matchup. I was going to say, if you think of Audi, you think of Darius. Darius has dropped off quite an amount, however, so now he's had to innovate. But it's we're the going first big change. Yeah, we're going to the skies, Rusty, as Audi will pick up Quinn heading into the top lane. This is a very 80 carry or 80 damage focused team being drafted here by Vici. Yeah, yes it is. Uh, Gragas will most likely be going towards the AP build, so they'll have some magic damage through the early to mid stages of the game, but only really physical once you get late game. And that is against a composition that's pretty good against a single type of damage. Uh, Shen being able to build armor, Swain also being able to go Zonia's as an early item. I mean, Swain Rise. and Rise both tanky exactly. AP champions, so they can itemize towards armor. Exactly, and then you look towards the rest of the map, Gangplank's just going to be a damage dealer, and I think that's the most important part of the map here for Sunin Gaming. If they can protect their top laner, and lo and behold, it's Xiao El, so I have a feeling they'll put some resources towards the big carry of the team, <laughs> but if they can get him going, then I think Sunin Gaming are in very good stead. However, if he falls behind, their physical damage is lacking, and they also become a one damage type of comp. So it's a little bit of fun coming out from VG. It's not completely unorthodox going into the match against Sunin. Quinn in the top lane has seen a lot of competitive play. I think four picks already in the LPL, including this one. Worldwide, it's been played here or there. It's a very fringe pick, niche yeah, champion. Yes, sir, from Keen during the playoffs of the LCK. So, you know, that has been seen fairly recently. LGD are a team that liked it. They love to pick themselves up some carry tops. And if your top laner is a carry player, there is always a time and a place to rock that Quinn and bring it out. And Quinn's strong in her own right if you've mastered the pick. It is still a very scary composition from v because they don't have much tankiness. You look at Gragas, he's probably going to build uh, Runic Echoes in the jungle so he won't pick up resistance he'll be a, health very early. He'll be a two-item semi-tank. In, in a weird way, so usually the Gragas will go towards his AP item and then he'll immediately go Gargoyle Stoneplate. So you've got magic resistance and armor in two items, so it kind of works. Yeah. Whereas everyone from Sunning, they'll be able to pick up some resistances early into the match. All beefy picks going from their side, but let's get on to the Rift for the first match between Sunning and Vici. So plenty of Suning and Vici fans here today in the Shanghai Arena. You'd have to expect a lot of the ticket sales went towards Victor's Gaming fans, being yeah. at their Fan Appreciation Day later on in the evening. Yeah, a lot of the stage will pack out towards the second set of the day for certain, with our big feature matchup, and as you mentioned, it being IG Day. So you'll hear the crowd more and more as the day continues. That's the most part. We're going to have a pretty 
slow and steady start to this early game. It was a headbutt from Alistar. It's the only real thing that we've seen. I mean, we could talk about the organization for these two teams. Nothing is unorthodox coming out from the runes. Maybe yep. besides Predator coming out from Gragas, which has seen a lot more play recently. Yep, that's no longer considered an unorthodox thing. In fact, I would say that Predator Gragas is now considered the standard. Very, very good at enabling ganks. If you think about it, one of the things that gates Gragas the most for ganking is that you have to flash body slam. Mm -hmm. But now you can use Predator and you can threaten without the need for a flash. The only other thing is Fury going for phase rush. Quite a few Swains have gone on the uh, Grass of the Undying hype train recently. Most of those are top laners, to Most be fair. Most of those top laners. Fury playing in the bottom lane position. Some early trades, top side and bottom side of the map. A couple of early wards being placed down. There was a counter jungle coming out from Hacker. Took away blue buff nice and early. And you know, when you look towards that top lane matchup, we'll get there in a second. They're fine, they're just they're smacking they're each other for a little bit. It's level one, they're mages, they don't do much damage. I don't trust Shane's, Shane, Shane's. Shane Warren, don't trust him a bit. Yeah, Shane Warren. Swain Shen. There's, I sound like Sean Connery. I don't trust that duo lane. I feel like they'll be action at any moment when you see those two. A single piece of crowd control is followed up with the kills. What I was going to say All right. is we towards got there. the top lane, uh, there's a couple of things that do interest me. Now, Grass with the Undying Gangplank is the standard now. There's no such thing as Kleptomancy really seen anymore. No more monies. Uh, Grass with the Undying does give you a better laning phase. So against someone like a Quinn, don't be too surprised if the Gangplank can hold it early. But Quinn's gone Ignite. So that is a compensatory thing if ever I have seen it. Going for that quick play here. Audi getting good damage onto Xiao Alba. Yu Tang flashes in with the flash body slam. First blood picked up by Vici. And smacks them from the max range as well. So there we go. We speak towards the top lane. Gra uh, Gangplank was controlling it, but in the process, he built up a big wave. So he's going to be made to pay for exactly that. Summoners used across the board from top laners of Vici and Sunin Gaming, but the kill, the gold, goes to Vici. And if you want to be annoying and ruin my solo queue experiences, here's the runes you'll run on Quinn in the top lane. Face rush as well as the mana flow band being picked up. But that's the kill on the top lane. Audi just jumping up the Xiao Al nice and early. Unorthodox for Xiao to make such a careless mistake. And I do think that it is in part perhaps recklessness in his decision making, but also that's the way you need to play the lane. So mid lane first. Fire Rain being jumped on. Force a flash away from the pillar. Hacker's just going to force him back towards his turret. Bottom side of the map, Caveman's going to take some damage as well. But you were talking about the top lane, you're saying that this is how you have to play the lane against Quinn. If you want to win lane, you have to get Grasp the Undying procs. And if you want to get Grasp procs off, you have to stay in combat. So it's not the easiest thing to be a Gangplank up in that matchup. No. If you know that their jungler is nearby, you tend to just default to losing. So I'd say that, you know, whilst part of that, you'd be looking at uh, Shao Al and saying maybe he was too aggressive. You know, maybe he stepped up too far. I'd also be putting some under Hacker, Hacker and saying, where were you, yeah. you know, when you dunk was ganking? If they know that's going to happen, they can protect him by Caveman. Taking a lot of damage, heal's going to come out. That's a flash pulverize. Fury locked down as well. Martin does get the kill, but Yoon trades back one for one. You're right, Rusty. Level three hits, and it's bloodiness in the bottom lane. When you consider that trade in the bottom lane, however, note that Vici's AD carry is the one who gets the kill and stays alive for the farm. So big win in the end there for Vici in the 2v2. But the teleport being available for Fury is something that circumvents that weakness, that potential issue that's there. And that'll actually push Martin pretty significantly out of the lane for a lot of this until his support comes back. Everything mostly neutralized then. Especially with that cannon minion right there means that the red side will push into the blue side a little bit easier. Oh, that's a four-man. Four-man gank coming out from Vici against Sunni. Not... Oh, man. Flash is available. Taunt comes through. Fire will try and jump in as well. They don't get too much done. In fact, Yudan takes quite a bit of damage for it. It does force the push in against Sunning, so Martin will have a much easier time going back to base. Yeah, it breaks the freeze and gives a recall to Martin. But when you think about, you know, what was actually thrown into that, in fact, it's not even going to break the freeze. Oh, no, they it. hold it. Yeah, it's going to tank the wave up. That was a Gragas with no flash, a Yasuo with no cleanse and no flash all trying to come towards the bottom lane just to alleviate pressure for a Tristan at a recall. I feel like that's one of those moments where maybe you just, you don't put all of that effort towards it. You'll take the flash, you'll say that's a win for certain, but to me that means you kind of have to come bottom lane again or it's not too worth it in the end. But now Sinning are going to try and attack the top side of the map. Hacker as well as Angel are rotating up to try and get a gank on towards Audi. Doesn't get spotted out by the scrying plant, so he'll be okay in the top lane, just farming underneath his own turret. Is it just me, or do, as every time you look at Sunning's mid laner's name, you just think of Shaggy? Angel? Yeah. Why does Angel make you think of Shaggy? Are you familiar with Shaggy? Shaggy from Scooby-Doo? No, no, the artist. Ooh, the singer. No, I am not familiar. Please explain. Ah, uh, nah, never mind. 
If I, you don't get it, you never will. I just thought you were talking about, you know, Scooby Dooby Doo. I mean, <laughs> rut roll. Uh oh, I'm in trouble now. No idea who this artist is. That's uh, actually quite disappointing. Why? How is that disappointing? If you don't know Shaggy, I'm, I'm disappointed. What genre of music does Shaggy make? Shaggy's genre of music is Shaggy. <laughs> He's, I, I don't know what I classify it as like R&B hip hop, but he's pretty unique. R&B hip hop, like the Chinese currency hip hop? R N B. Okay. Rhythm and blues, bro. Rhythm and blues hip hop. I've had enough of you Australians and your unorthodox music preferences. That's not even Australian. Well, let's get back into the games, shall we? Uh, <laughs> take a look at VG and Sydney here. It's been a very interesting early game. We saw some uh, some. Nice gang towards top side map coming out from Vici. Good plays in the bottom lane by both duos. A good mechanical outplay is coming out from Caveman turning around a fight that Suning had in their favor to start. Uh, but these are two very big organizations. We touched on it briefly. Vici is a very well-known esports organization in China. I believe they have a team playing at the the International, the yeah, Dota 2 International. I and mean, Vici is a storied organization that has a very tragic story in League of Legends. You know, mm. since their existence in the League of Legends world, they have struggled. They tried to pick up Koreans, they tried to pick up world champions, and they never made it higher than sixth place, even with those players in the roster. Think Dandy and Marta. You know, someone that can ruin the LCK, just be that good of a player, potem potentially go to international tournaments, did it with RNG and still look outstanding, but he sits on Vici and struggles to get anything done. So Vici, I mean, they really have struggled in the LPL, whilst their organization does have a lot of renown through the esports world in China. Which is why it's quite a curious case for Vici, because they have these world-class esports teams in different, uh, different games and different titles. And they have the world-class players playing in their League of Legends squad, but Xiao is being ganked here, knocked back. That should be an easy pickup for Vici. Stand United is used, but the shield is not big enough. He waited for that gank for some time, Rusty. It even interrupted our monologues there, but good gank in the top lane. A return gank into the top lane gives Vici another pick. Yeah, very patient movements there from the jungler of Vici. And, you know, credit to him. He has gotten some kills. He has started off on the right foot. And most of it has been topside. But even then, gets a gank bottom. Looking decent so far as the jungler of Vici, the new jungler at that. But for yep. the most part, Xiao El, whilst he has died two times, he's got his sheen. He's still getting towards his items. The real benefactor is that the Quinn is ahead. That is the scary thing that Suning have to deal with. Quinn has an even worse problem than Jace in the sense that if Quinn doesn't get ahead, she's never going to get ahead. Jace has to be ahead to do well, but can still fight from being even, can still fight slightly from being behind. Quinn cannot. Yeah, you can still fight in your lane as Jace as well. Like, even if you're slightly behind, the Blade of the Ruin King build is a good way around it. But more often than not, Jace going for lethality. If he falls behind, he stays behind just because that is the way lethality works with all the tanks that run around on the roof. But not so many tanks anymore, especially no. not in this game, actually. We see a gank from Audi going to the mid lane against Angel. Gets the knock up for Fire Rain to continue with his own ultimate. Good Rune Prison locks him down just outside of turret range. Yeah, but you can see the potential combo already. Audi has got the knockback. Gragas has the knockback. Alistar and Everyone. Tristan are all do as well. So Fire Rain is going to be the Arbot. Just press it and see what happens. As do note that he has no mana, so even if he goes back to lane to catch that wave, he's not really going to have a good time holding the turret, would actually lose more from it, so he's going to choose to recall, and <laughs> that is, uh, that was a lot of stuff spent around the map, a lot of time, a lot of resources, not wasted, just used. Xiao will be pretty happy about that. He's now 70 CS 77, so just a wave behind Audi at the moment. Still a gangplank though, so get some extra gold with yep. all those last hits. Scales He'll incredibly be. well into the late game too, so he'll be perfectly fine. I'm talking about the organizations earlier, and again, the curious case for me was the fact that Vici have had all these world-class players, so it's not a talent problem. It's definitely not an organization problem. This is an organization that has seen many different world-class teams in many different titles. I mean, we could speculate all we want, right? But the only real thing we know is that it's a problem. Mm. And the root cause is very much undefined and has persisted through their existence. So it's something that we can't definitively see or say what it is as, you know, people who spectate their performances. And it was a good story for them last year, coming back into the LPL, playing with Uzi Hoon. Easy Hoon? Uzi Hoon. <laughs> Easy Hoon throughout uh, the promotion tournament. 
promoting Vici back into the LPL before yeah, Spring Split this year. Uh, it was crucial for them too, because that was when Franchise started. And those people may be wondering where Easy Hoon currently is. And all we do know is that he practices hard, but he's still not playing his top lane again. Another gank coming in towards the top side of the map. Teleport being used. That was coming out from Fury to try and protect Xiao Ao. Yudang is still here in the top lane, but... It's gone now. Gives Gangplank enough time to clear out the wave, so he is safe. Yoon has got the Shen ultimate and the rest of Sin and Gaming, including the Rise ulti, are now going to come up. I feel like it's a bit of an overextension here from Yordang if he chooses to stay. I want to body slam over. He will get himself ooh, to a degree out to safety. Yeah, there's the Rise ultimate coming through. Audi going to take quite a bit of damage here. Locked down by Rune Prison. Everyone piles in. No flash available for Quinn. Angel picks up a kill in the top lane. And there was something fishy about that play from Vici, and Hello. they knew it. They knew what was happening. And it doesn't work out for them in the end. Yoldunk survives, but Audi is the sacrifice from a Rise ult. He is bottom. Lots of pressure. Yeah, still lots of pressure in the bottom lane. You're now holding on to his taunt every time Fury locks down Tristana. Making sure that Caveman can't interrupt the Shadow Dash. The tragedy that is Tristana as well. You can just buff your jump through pretty much anything you would like. And taunt is one of those interactions where you can probably still jump out. You don't walk back in anyway. You're taunted, so you just attack from your long range that a Tristana has. It's, it's tragic. You're done again going towards top side of the map. Xiao Ao. Good evening. Ganked. Alone, man. Smite comes through, but he does knock him back. Good slow coming out from the queue. Howdy's able to get back towards top side of the map. Gets himself another kill. Two, one and one on Quinn. Already picked up the Blade of the Ruined King as well. And things that we know. Persistence pays off. That is something that we have learned through this first game already in favor of Vici's top side of the map. But also, Xiao Ao just one more wave philosophy is something that uh, <laughs> that really hurts him there. He could have gone back to base. He knew he wasn't in a safe position. He doesn't have vision. Nah, that's Look not at what the they're wards doing. and notice that there are none that are blue, but he still chooses to push that extra wave or Suning are playing towards the other side of the map. Yeah, we're seeing the sides of the map traded. Vici will take first turret in the top lane. Audi picks up all that gold as well. Split gold going down to the bottom side of the map of Suning who returned with their second turret. So they're making the right Right, macro plays after Vici able to pick up a top lane kill, the first turret. I think best case scenario here for Sunning Gaming is that they can rotate to the Herald to try and contest it, but I don't think they'll be able to. Again, the vision that we spoke towards is already in place for Vici Gaming, and they had such a head start on hitting this one that there is no gonna, there's not going to be a follow-up trade from their respective opponents no. as they try and come over, but not quite in time. I mean, Sunning already got the Ocean Dragon earlier in the match, at about nine minutes into the game, I believe they picked it up. This is good though from Suning. They tried to route them towards the top side by making them oh, walk away. This. So they'll get themselves the mid lane turret from it. Yeah. And that's one of those trades where I'm not going to say this is purely an upward trajectory type of trade from Suning because the Rift Herald can still get that back and they can still break their opponent's mid lane outer. But that's a good little move there from Suning, adapting on the fly. Cloud Dragon's going to come up in 20 seconds as well. So Suning could try and set up for that objective if they'd like. Audi's going to be pretty happy that now the top lane is opened up. Queen can try and chase down Gangplank or potentially roam around the map even more. You tossed that meat. Did he? I don't know. It's hard to see. It's very obscured. When yeah, he's I hope he did. In the brush. He's in the bush. Right on bush. We talked about Vici's organization. Suning have a very strong organization as well. This is one of the largest electronic e-commerce websites in China. Dude, the number one. Some number one brand to go to when you're looking for electronics. Yeah. We have some big organizations in this league and you often forget about it, especially, you know, us being Westerners coming over to China and just saying, top sports, what is top sports? And then you realize that every brand of like sports gear that you purchase is actually from them. Yep. But then that really settles in. You're like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's, that's lots. Like same, that's a lot. Same with Suning, right? Your, any of your electronics or your major electronics are probably from Suning. Why are you doing that in the top side? They really want to win the top half of the map. Caveman Yodung working together. That'll most likely be a big charge on the turret. Oh, sure. Here's Angel coming through as well. Looking for the flank onto Audi. Shen's going to try and jump up towards top lane as well. They've left him for dead. Audi gets taken down. Fury's trying to collapse as well. Yodung wants to get over this wall. Flashes through, but Shen falls through. Fury picking up that kill. Punts it back by Yodung. But Fury's going to continue chasing on this Swain pick. Locks down Caveman. Pulls him back. Unbreakable will gets popped. It's not going to stop just yet though, Rusty. Pulverize will come oh, through. Empire's end. vision makes him flash away. So Fury gets the most bang for his buck there. So he makes sure he gets all the kills. 
and pops a lot of summoner spells on the back half of that fight as well. <laughs> that is just so incredibly worth for Sunin Gaming. And that, that's one of those moments where, again, Vici, we spoke towards their potential to trade in the middle lane. If they really wanted to, they could have gone for the turret in mid, maybe grouped up for it. But they place it on the top side. Caveman, Yodang working together. So the decision was very clearly top lane inner. They wanted to break that part of the map so wide open that Audi is just unleashed on the world. But in the process of doing that, Audi's actually the one who dies. Oh, but Audi might, might be able to get himself a return kill here. Xiao Al's being ganked on the top side of the map. He's a level up on this gangplank, but the damage coming out from this pick is going to be too strong. Now Exhaust thrown out by Yu, locked down by Fury. Suni rotate towards the top lane. They save their pirate's life. They're going to pick up a turret for their efforts as well. And Audi is still the one who goes down in the end. Unfortunately for this Quinn, the Ignite's not going to be enough damage to take down the Gangplank. Gangplank has gotten his Trinity Force completed as well and is still comfortable, though not sitting pretty, as far as top laners are going, comparably, anyway. And then you look at the rest of the map from Sunning Gaming, and they've got themselves a decent amount of control. Fury on the Mages, we mentioned just how good he is on that. Congratulations, Shawel. You've been promoted to Platinum because you got lots of fan votes, I believe. I, I've been told what this is, and I keep forgetting how to explain it. Um, I saw it on... Basically, uh, every player has a rank, and by getting support from the fans, which is through, I believe, donations, you go up in rank. So I read this over WeChat a couple of days ago, Rusty. Uh, from what I understood, it's a combination of your performance and fan votes that come through that give oh, you rankings. performance as well. Uh, which I'm starting to question because Xiao Ao is 0, 3, and 4. So unless he's getting a lot of pity votes... I reckon um, it's only votes. I reckon it's only fan votes. He's made his way to Platinum through fan votes alone. Well done. He's got assists. He's technically positive. I've been told that, yes, it's from fan votes alone at the moment. What are the other uh, rankings we have? It seems like Caveman and Fire Rain are currently silver. Hack is stuck in silver as well, so Xiao Al very clearly in elo health. Uh, Angel, Fury, and Yun in challenger, or is that gold? Uh, or bronze? I'd say gold. Yeah, gold. Really? Yeah, let's go with gold. Bro, because that means that all of VG are also gold, and I don't think they're challenger. I want to say, I want to say that's bronze. You know what? That's we'll gold. Just... I've been told I'm wrong. It's gold. How many times in a row do you think he'll just be... <laughs> I'm glad we got there. Okay, so what we can take away from this last couple of minutes of conversation is that Shell right. is the best player in his team, and he's stuck in Elo Hell. Hello, because he's platinum. Um, I've never seen players change rank so quickly, though, Rusty. I got a, uh, I got demoted from Diamond uh, Five all the way down to Plat Four, I think it was. I can't remember. Um, and I jumped up to plat 3 by playing a couple of games. I think that's the fastest I've ever climbed a rank. That's what happens when you demo for inactivity, Fish. Look, I was having too much fun with Nexus Splits, all right? That game mode is amazing. Unless you're against a Syndra. Yes, and then you can watch Nexus's Int for a little bit. Um, that was my favorite post on Reddit for this week. But someone's Nexus saying that now, now my Nexus can int as well, Riot, please? <laughs> I played a game yesterday with our producer and he got really obsessed with blocking the Nexus. You can pin your block it, like Dota. Oh, goodness. I mean, just because the International's on doesn't mean we have to turn into Dota, but Caveman's forced to use his unbreakable will. Gonna get pulled back as well. Lasts for quite enough time for him to get back to the safety of his turret. But Sunny, they're relentless now. They picked up a small lead for themselves putting a lot of pressure in the mid lane and top lane. The only thing that Vici are trying to do to respond to this pressure is try and force the turret bot side or go oh, for this pick up the hacker, knocks it back with the alley-oop. Standing Knight's gonna come out from Yoon, not gonna be enough. During this time, top lane turret's going to fall. Fire Rain trying to collapse, pops the ultimate as well. Angel taking some damage, doesn't Still get alive. through his own ultimate. The rest of the team now gonna try and show up Audi with the big flank. Good damage on towards him. Let's see if they can do enough, gets that first kill. Out of stasis, Yoon comes and the Shadow Dash will follow through. Audi will fall, Angel gets that kill. It's a scrappy team fight, but Sunning come out on top. And all it takes for Sunning is the reinforcements to arrive. Once Shawel and Fury get to the party, the party is crashed, it is well and truly over. What I will say for Vici is that Yildang has proved Proven that mechanically he is very good on this Gragas. And the question is never going to be about his mechanics. It's the decision of Vici Gaming to continue the rest of that fight after they'd won the early parts of it. You'll most likely see that in a replay. Fire Rain is someone who steps up a little bit too much there. And Sunny Gaming are the real victors.
two turrets and all the kills being picked up by Sunning. They'll be pretty happy with that trade. Let's look at it again. This Hacker is gets jumped on first. Like, the Gragas ultimate perfectly placed, knocks them under the turret. The angle that he had to hit that was immaculate, and he does exactly that. From this point, I understand that they thought they had the free second kill onto Angel, but Yoon's actually playing a big part in it by putting the W down. And, and then a big flank comes in from Audi, and whilst he gets the kill, he's also immediately going to die for that. Xiao El has repelled the rest of the force of Vici Gaming as well, and they just had to scatter. So you take that first kill, you save your turret, and then you just regroup. Mm -hmm. And you just back away as a five, or you go forwards as a five. And I think they just force a little bit too hard when their opponents are this strong already. Yeah, at the end of the day, it was a two for two trade. Audi got some damage onto the bottom lane. The Outer turret, turret also died. Yeah, but mid lane turret died for the side of Vici. Top lane turret died for the side of Vici as well. And Martin escaped with less than 50 hit points. Fire Rain escaped with less than 250 hit points. That could have been a 4 for 2 trade going into Nick's favor. And again, not to discredit Vici's decision making there, I, it actually, was a good play. I actually believe that they made the correct call. Someone hitting their turret in a position where they could engage, they did. They didn't just concede when they were losing objectives. They chose to fight. I respect that, and I think that that was perfectly fine for them to do. Someone who watches LCK would be like, what are you doing? But as the LPL, that is the perfect mindset to try and get those team fights at that point. It's the follow-up, it's the regrouping, it's their inability to team fight their opponents, but committing to the cause. Oh, here is a slight three-on-one. Fire Rain gets jumped on by Angel. Gangplank throws down his ultimate and Yoon joins with the Stand United as well, picking up a pick onto Vici's mid laner who was in the top lane. Yeah, Fire Rain has got two completed items and chooses to side lane at that point in the game, but he goes towards the top side of the map. Now. Neither of the split pushers have teleport, so he can't go bottom, or his opposing side would be able to just machine gun down the Baron buff. And you know, no AD carry, not necessarily a problem when you've got a Gangplank and a Swain and a Rise, who have so much consistent spell damage output as well. So they choose to put the Yasuo top side, but that's also the most vulnerable place. And really, Fire Rain should be showing a lot of respect, because that was a sick keg combo. One on one coming down between Audi and Xiao Ao. Flashing forward early, doesn't get the second keg down, but Audi can't run fast enough. Force the flash away. Xiao Ao doesn't have his own ultimate available, uh -oh. but Empire Vision comes out in the final parlay for Xiao Ao. Gets the solo kill in the bottom lane. Yeah, Vision just completely blocks the path off there as you're dying now with Angel, maybe in a 1v3. Throws out the ultimate, Never but only mind. knocks Angel back further to safety. Jump Blue Sway choose, going to help him out. Meanwhile, bottom. So Sunny Gaming, once again, they get the victory. They get the pick thereafter. And when Vici attempts to replicate that play on the other side of the map, doesn't go to plan at all. Vici have got the right brain for the job. But the buttons are not being pressed cohesively. And the, more importantly, the positioning of the team not working around that. This is still, I mean, better late than never is the saying here, but it's a little bit too late for Vici. It's still good to see that they're making these improvements late into the summer split, because 2019 is all Vici have to look towards now. You've got a long off season, especially with the World Championship being a lot shorter this time round, only taking up the month of October, I believe it is. Or it's just, you know, in a very roundabout way, just super savage of you to say something like that. How is that savage? Vici, they get a big holiday. It's I was going to say that now they've got all this time during the offseason. I know what you're saying. To build towards 2019, Rusty! Indirectly what you said. Big holiday. Beachy, they burned I mean, it. technically, Sunny will get a big holiday as well, right? If you count them as one of the LPL teams going to the World Championship, Rusty. I mean, Sunny Gaming are in playoffs, man. They're in so playoffs. Anything can happen, but uh, difficult. I one. mean, currently, literally anything can happen in our league. RNG and EDG, two teams who are in our spring finals, still run the risk of not being there. Who do you think is going to be the three representatives and how do they get there? Oh man. So, I mean, there is a million different ways this can happen and I can't say for certain what the three will be because RNG winning on points is such a like real possibility. Of course, they picked up first, last split, so I think that as long as they get fourth, they should get it. I think. What's exciting is there is a real world possibility. We might have to let Audi die first, but we'll see. Ooh, yeah, that's we'll a nice cake combo coming out from Xiao Ao. Gets the damage. Good play of the Ruin King. Gonna be able to slow him down. Audi getting away. That's a Shadow Dash into an exhaust coming out from Yoon. He's good. And he's okay. Audi escapes. Phase Rush is a very big deal. Of course, mid lane they attempt to trade again, but this time it was flashed by Angel. There's teleports in. 
being used as well as the rune rune prison realm rock coming out there hack is going to flash forward on top of yutan gets that easy kill now chasing the rest of the members of vg rune prison coming back off of cooldown shortly shadow dive shoulder wall from yoon three man knocker going to come out from fire rain but he just wants to disengage great pillar in the choke point that'll be the sacrifice of caveman to Whoa. save the rest of his team martin is firing on all cylinders in the back lines but he does absolutely no damage to Sunning. Fire Rain tries to run, but you can't hide from Fury flashing over the wall into the base, and Sunning just mow down Vici. Yeah, Fury's got that wizard hat, so he cannot be stopped right now. Deathcap doing so much damage to the rest of Vici, and that was a desperate turnaround from them. They thought they had the combo maybe to work as a team, but a 0-2 now Yasuo, and a 0-3 now Alistar don't really have the damage to secure those kills, and try as Martin might, free firing into the ranks of his opponent. A Blade of the Ruined King and a Storm Razor is not the most damage. He needs three yeah. items, needs four items, really, to be purely online. With this build, four items is a must. Yeah. For what it's worth, Sin and Gaming can afford to brute force and let their opponents throw spells at them. As party cask, congratulations. Yeah, Yutang does the right thing, tries to steal it with what he's got. Not gonna happen. The only consolation prize that Vici get is the bottom lane <laughs> in a turret. That's a Shirelius. Why? <laughs> Why does Yutang have a Shirelius? Why not? He likes dying quicker. Maybe because the tankiest person on his team is his support Alistar? Yeah, he died very quickly there. Oh, he did. You'll see the turnaround here. Caveman, Fire Rain. It's an Alistar Yasuo combo. So he thought he had the four man combo, and guess what? He pretty much did. And they'll knock up three of them. They'll follow it through. Martin has been hitting this whole time. But we spoke about this in Champion Select. It doesn't matter how much you hit them. They're bruisers, they're tanky, and they got ahead early into this game, and now they've got a Baron. So they're most likely going to be able to close this first one out. 55,000 to 58,000 gold. Sitting up, pushing on towards the first inhibitor turret. It's nowhere close to a clean match for Sinning. I think if you're the organization against Vichy running subs into this match, you would would want closer to a perfect game. I mean, that's, it's still asking a lot, and fair play to Vici, they're playing a lot better in this match. But there are def but still there the definitely are things that Suning could clean up going into this. Like, Suning definitely could be a little bit cleaner, and we mentioned that namely through the top side of the map, to be fair. I, d I don't think that their performance in this game has been by any means dirty. They've been pretty clean overall. And Vici, while well, you mentioned there has been improvements, I think that's partly correct. I think the decision making is there, but everything else involving the decision making isn't necessarily besides purely the mechanics of Yuldung which is something that we've been able to watch in this game with great surprise of course we didn't get a good sample size of him prior it's been a pleasure to watch his Gragas mechanically I just realized that um, teams also get rankings Rusty yeah I noticed but I'm pretty sure Vici is solidly bronze yeah because that's what bronze looks like mm -hmm. <laughs> how are they bronze when they've got four gold players now, now I'm absolutely convinced that that is bronze. I just, I have a feeling that people vote for players and teams separately, right? So, Vici's players have got support, but like, why would I vote for the team when I can vote for the player, <laughs> is how I would interpret it. You know, as a fan of players in the LPL, you know, a lot of the, the Chinese audience are fans of players more than they are just explicitly teams. Mm -hmm. That's the right way to build a league, get them fans of the actual players himself. But Audi trying to jump in quite deep there, takes a lot of damage, force a heal out of Martin to keep him alive. Teleports are coming out from multiple Sunning members to try and collapse into fight. Sorry, just shout out, teleporting into this fight. Yeah, he's just going to join them. Baron Buff's still going to persist for 40 seconds to so this wave and the next. And they'll find the opportunity to break open another inhibitor. Pretty much uncontested here, unless Vici do something crazy. Well, Caveman's trying, pops the unbreakable will, collapses on towards Hacker. Yutan goes in as well. Hacker in a lot of trouble, taking good damage. Marta gets that first kill, but it will be Fire Rain that falls for the side of Vici. Inhibitor is open, and Sunning will be able to take this one down, even pushing Vici back towards their Nexus. Fury, so tanky as well, building towards a Randomans or a Frozen Heart with his items, and still they're pushing with Baron. Ten seconds left, one more turret will fall. They've got Maybe that, two. They've got that cannon minion as well as another wave coming through. It's easy for Sunning to continue sieging on this turret. 25 seconds until Fire Rain comes back up. Baron buff just expired though. Ultimate comes out from Yutan trying to separate the way, but they've got a super minion here as well, so that's good damage on towards this turret. Go. Fury's gonna take this down nice and easy. Now on top of the Nexus. Four players from the side of each trying to do what they can. Yutan oh. jumps in, but Fury gets a kill onto Audi. Martin forced to jump back towards the fountain. Vici tried their hardest. 
Flashy players come out from Angel at the end, but they take down the Nexus and game one goes to Suning. Definitely one of those performances in this game where, at the end of the day, Suning were the stronger team. And Vici, they showed some signs of life. They showed some fight in the system, but they were bested at the end. And that early game lead, remember that Suning Gaming are an early mid-game base team. Getting ahead at that point in the game makes them all but unstoppable, regardless of who their opponent is. Good start to the match coming out from Suning. V2 will have to go back to the drawing board and try and fix their problems going to this next set again. They're not really fighting for anything except for Dignity coming into this match. And they did make some some promising plays. I mean, until 12 minutes in, they were even against Suning. And they were attacking the top side of the map. They were trying to shut down Xiao Ao, who still managed to come back and have the most damage done to champions in the game. Yeah, I mean, when you think about the decision-making here of Vici, I liked it quite a lot. If you bring this all the way back to the end of Champions, like the one thing that we said is that Xiao El, if he falls behind, there'll be a mostly magic damage type of composition. You'd have a Ryze and a Swain as your two big carries, and there's a chance that you could build resistances against that. There's a chance that you could play against that and do exceptionally well. But at the same time, whilst that is true, Vici's composition doesn't really build that single type of resistance. And Xiao El, still able to deal the damage because no one built resistances at all. That was a Shirelia's revelry coming out of the Gragas, someone who's squishy, and all of these people that were going up to his lane means that he was able to deal a lot of relevant damage. That was one of the big things coming into the summer season as well, the fact that lots of bruises are popular, lots of tanky mages are popular as well. Make it difficult for compositions like the one that Vichy set up to actually succeed. AD carries aren't as strong currently, they're getting better and better as patches go by, but yeah. Tristana as well as Quinn just didn't have enough firepower to break through the tanky team. And Tristana's definitely a champion you'll start to see more and more of uh, playing League of Legends currently. I think that she's actually in a pretty good spot at the moment with the changes in price to a lot of the crit items. Mm -hmm. It's more accessible for Tristana to get three. And Tristana getting three is already a big deal. You know, she's got a Q and she's got levels to compensate where a lot of other champions don't. So I think she's actually in good stead. But when you look at the overall draft from this set, of course it's on your screens now, Vici, they picked a lot of squishy champions. I think the choice of the Tristana could very easily have been something else. And this comes all the way back to when we first saw the two picks. I actually think, think that maybe that could have just been the Yasuo Alistar in that bottom lane, and they had a mage mid instead. Yeah, go full RNG. Throw Yasuo and Alistar into the bottom lane, see what happens. I mean, it was eventually a Swain and Shen pick in the bottom side of the map. That's something that Yasuo can navigate quite well. They decide not to do it. Vici still do something unorthodox with the Quinn pick. It is a niche pick, a fringe pick, and it's something we have seen before. Um, but I was actually expecting a lot more from Vici when it came to the experimenting and their draft phase because this, this nothing matters to them coming to the set. This is the time for them to use their experiments or try something different on the stage itself. I mean, there's a chance, and the same thing applied for Sunning Gaming, right? Like there was there was a real possibility that we got something wacky or something crazy coming out in this game. And and for game one, Vici, we mentioned I'm not too surprised that they went with super standard. I think even then, their super standard could use a little bit more work. I think the Quinn was a wild card thrown into the mix from Audi. I think that the Tristana, whilst we're starting to see more and more of it, is a pick that is still fairly niche. It has to be picked in the right circumstances. You know, having an Alistar Tristana is your OG lane. So, yeah. not too surprised to see that one. But of course, you got to see an example of some of the good stuff that Vici did good. do. That was clean. It was using the Ignite Quinn in the top lane, having the Gragas come up. And I mean, that happened like six more times. And they kept doing it. Exactly. They kept doing it. Uh, time and time again, Yo Dang made his way into the top lane, was looking for ganks. A couple of times towards the mid game, though, that's where Suni really turned it around. They countered those ganks in the top lane, and um, Xiao had a very difficult time to start. But once he got the ball rolling on his gank plank, he was picking up solo kills against Aldi's Quinn. He always had bush control as well, and you know, the one thing that Xiao did do rather questionably was his overextensions without vision, his choice to take just that one more wave, and that's the kind of things where you know, it's not something that he'll often do. Xiao Al is a big carry player, often gets support of the rest of his team. And it could be one of those, I'm playing against Vici, I can do what I want type of mentalities from him. But he still gets punished. And yes. you know, getting punished in those situations with a carry against you opposing you, giving that gold to someone like Gragas, who can go to a Yasuo lane and have a duo combo. I think these are big risks that Xiao Al needs to always consider, regardless of who the opponent is, right? Or well, what closer with Hacker, potentially. I mean... We already talked about if yeah. you're looking towards Xiao Ao making those risks or those big plays top side of the map, Hacker needs to be on the same page. He needs to be up there with him so if those ganks come through, he can protect the game plank. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was the other thing that we could potentially look at. Hacker and Xiao Ao, when you think of the start of the split, they won their first three sets back to back. 
and a lot of their strength was Shaolau being the MVP, Hacker being the MVP, but both of them playing top side together. And eventually, soon in gaming, they look towards their bottom side. And they're like, Fury and Yuna are actually not too bad in this meta. They picked up mages very well. So they started to play down towards that side of the map. And suddenly, Shaolau's dying a lot. You know, Shaolau's caught out of position a lot. And he's made the full of. And it could be that he was so used to having Hacker there. And that has been a byproduct, perhaps, of their playstyle. There were talks about Shaolau being one of the best top laners in the league. Where do you think he currently stands? I don't know a lot about software. That's, that's the one place where I would look at and I can give you a baseline answer, you know? I'd say, like, Bashai and Duke are what two of our top players. Let me on Orn is probably the best in the league, but only on Orn. Zatai on Darius is probably the best just on Darius. But I'd say that, you know, he when he is playing his best, he's probably top five out of all of them. And, I mean, that's considering there's 14... Mm teams in our league, let alone the yeah, subs. Let alone so, subs. I mean, you already mentioned two top laners from the same team of Victus Gaming. Two so, from RNG as well. I mean, being from the top five is already good enough from the side of Xiao Ao, and he picks up MVP for his match one performance against Vici. Very strong in the top lane. He fought his way back into it as well <laughs> after being ganked time and time again. Yeah, look. It, yeah. Yeah, it could be like... You disagree? It could be not Xiao Ao as uh, well. Who would you give it to? So, Xiao Ao did a lot of damage. That's firstly, you know, he did well. He died gracefully. He came back into the game very well, and are he was tilt-proof. Are if, you giving Xiao out the golf clap? If the game ended, and I was giving, you know, some, some, uh, I forget what it's called now. Honor? Honor. To someone, I give him a tilt-proof. I give him a, a tilt-proof. I think he was very tilt-proof. But I also think that Fury just played out of his mind in that game, and was, was very good. Fury did play very, did play very well on the Swain pick in the bottom lane. And with that sinning pick up a game one victory over Vici. Don't go anywhere, because we're going to a break. We're back with game two, and we have our match of the week coming up later. Sue Niu Dui Yuan Bohui Wei Yi Han Zhao Jie Kou Bi Xu Bian Qiao Bi Xu Jin Bo